Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. This is part two of the Designing a Planetary Lander video. So, this time it's actually going to be live. <laughs> For once, this is going to be a live video. And let's get right into it by designing the actual planetary lander that I think we'll use. You can see here we're using an actual cockpit, not a Jeb's cabin or anything. And the reason we're using this is because of the unique and varied amount of problems not using the main cockpit gives us and it really is quite annoying uh, by using the main cockpit I'll go into those problems later by the way but by using the main cockpit we can have decouplers on our launch vehicle so that's good and because of that we can have less fuel to carry around so we could use half tanks, that actually does work, but we're going to use full tanks just to give us some room to manoeuvre. This extra amount of fuel, so we've only got three and a half, and yet we've already got more Delta V than we had previously. But instead of using half tanks, we're going to use full tanks, because that extra fuel means we can deorbit uh, using the sh engines, you know, deorbit using the lander engine which is uniquely useful. No, it's not uniquely useful, it's actually it's just plain old useful. So, let's connect some fuel lines going from those tanks. And this is our lander. We just need to slap some parachutes onto it, slap some ladders onto it. If we put that there, and we can put one of those there. Nope, not quite. <laughs> there we go. And because of the way we've designed this here, we can use these very light landing legs. So that is a plus. Saves us a lot of weight there. And that is our lander. It's pretty small, and for that reason, it's pretty awesome. So how are we going to get this to a different planet? Well, we're going to need a lot of thrust, that's for sure. And the main problem we have for using the actual cockpit as our lander uh, cockpit cabin is that we're going to have to use a uh, what's it called we're going to have to use a Jeb cabin one of these for our main part now I would do this as a three man thing but because we've only got one man going down in the lander and also mainly because I haven't actually built a Jeb's cabin <laughs> that is a mech Jeb implemented crew cabin I haven't actually properly built one for the three man. We're going to do it with the small guy. Yes, it shall be so. And what we are also going to do is place three parachutes on him. Like that nearly there. There we go. And unfortunately to control it we're going to have to use RCS. That is a shame, but it's necessary. And we are also going to want to put a, an SES module. We could do that on a lower stage. Hmm, thinking about it. I think we'll leave that, see if we get any problems, and we'll do that on a lower stage. So we have two RCS tanks. I think that's going to be about right. Um, we can get our big fuel tank and our LV909 big liquid engine. And we can actually have extra fuel on the sides if we so wish. Not entirely convinced about that yet, but no doubt further testing will reveal to us whether that's necessary. And we're going to go for a different launch design because I'm in the mood. How about we have one of these and we take... hmm... Let's take this, put that back, have three of these, and we will, we will have them like this. And we shall put three engines on the side. Going to be more... oh, wait, I missed out the crucial part. Haha, <laughs> there we go. More fuel and more thrust to compensate. And because of this, we're also going to take some fuel from these tanks. 
and feed it into this engine. Ah, and because we're doing that, we can actually take this and detach them. Yeah, that makes sense. That'll work just fine, I think. Put that there. Oh, that's going to want to be higher. Because we're attaching it by the top fuel tank. There we are. And we can take... Where was that fuel line? There it is. Grab that, and we can draw a fuel line going from... Here, is that central? Yep. Going from here, we can have it go straight into the engine. It's not really a problem. I mean, it's less realistic, but... Hmm, actually, maybe... Now, if we take this and move the whole stack up to about there, it might automatically connect to the fuel tank. There we are. Great. Okay, and we're going to want to have all those engines firing, so at the moment it's just the outside three... Actually, before we'll do that, we'll add some boosters onto the side. Boosters are good. I do like the new boosters. I feel that burning for a longer amount of time, even though it's not twice as long, uh, I think it helps somewhat. Also, this is definitely going to have enough fuel to get where we need it to go. So that's fine. Um, yeah, just have those on the side. And we can go straight into that stage, yep. I don't think this will be enough to take us to another planet. It might be. It might well be. Um, not sure about bringing us back, certainly. But for the most part, this is just for testing purposes. And we can see how much fuel we need to add to it before we go into a full design. We can put something there to stop wobble. And similarly, we can put something there to stop wobble. And down here. There we are. And where else can we put them? I think the boosters are fine, really. They're fine like that. So, we've got... Well, when we sort out the staging, we will have that. Let's do that now, actually. Uh, anything else? Yes. There is the launch towers. Launch control stability systems, I think they're called. Have that. And we'll just bring it down a bit more. There we are. Only need three, because these are infinitely strong, <laughs> for whatever reason. So let's have a look at this. Boosters fire, and the outside engines fire, plus this engine fires. Uh, yes, I think that will work. And then we want to have the boosters detach. So, are these the boosters? Yes. Boosters detach, and then those detach. And then that detaches. Next, we have that engine firing on its own. That's fine. And those are going to go automatically anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Then that detaches. And then that engine comes on along with... Um, no, we can have another stage. It's fine. That engine comes on, and then we can open up these parachutes. And then that detaches and that engine fires and then that engine will take us back up into orbit well take us the rest of the way back up into orbit and then we'll rendezvous with this part and see if that can take us home hopefully what i'm hoping that will happen uh, the current way i'm having this i'm hoping that these parachutes will snap off <laughs> the rest of this otherwise we might encounter some problems but we'll deal with that as it arises. We can have three there. And three there. Oh. What's that for? Ah, oh, we're just taking that off. Silly me. Okay, I think that's it. If we don't have enough fuel, we have a few options that we can do. Nope, I don't want you. I just want, I just want that thing that I've dropped. God damn it. <laughs> Come back here. No. Oh. Why are these always so difficult? Come on, just give me the... You know, you know what? Screw it. You can stay there if you like. I don't care. I'll just go and get another ladder. Replace you. Not working. Huh. Can't get the ladders these days. What was I saying? <laughs> 
I knew I was saying something. Um, yes, if we don't have enough fuel, we can always add everything, uh, everything ascent engines. That's no problem. And we can add some extra tanks onto the side here. Yes. We can do all manner of things, but for now, I think that's worthy of a test. Okay, let's name it. Uh, trial and success. Optimistic. There's the moon. How wonderful. Okay, SAS on. Nope, not SAS on. We want to have surf function on. Heading 90, pitch 0. Oh, that's plus. Can't I just change you? Yes. Pitch 0. Wait, is that 0 or is that 360? Aha. <laughs> Um, no, heading is zero. Heading is zero, pitch is zero. Okay. Execute. And let's launch. Please be right. Please be right. No, it's not right. No, it is certainly not right. Either that, or it's just not working. Abort. That did not work. I like how it ended before even showing us it hitting the ground. That's great. Let's restart flight. Try that again, I think. Okay, you know what? SES, we don't need you. We're not going to use you. Because you're no good. We've proved that much, I think. And let's just go off of our own control. Manual control in 3, 2, 1, launch. <laughs> I'm not even touching anything and it's working much better. Okay, slight corrections now. Uh, we know we can throttle down just a bit. About here for the moment. Leaning a bit and we're a bit rotated. So if we can just turn anti-clockwise, try and sort that out. Tilting over a bit to try and avoid dropping the solid rocket boosters on our heads, or on mission control's heads at least. <laughs> As if mission control is going to be anywhere near the actual launch pad. No, I think um, to avoid breaking the launch pad is a more suitable excuse. Really, it was just because I had, don't have very good control over the ship. That's the only real reason. Okay, we're going to stay at this throttle now. Unfortunately, this probably won't work as well as it will in 0 0.7, because... No, this will work much better than it will in 0 0.7, this same design. Because having throttle on low, uh, it gets affected by a bug. Fuel consumption gets affected by a bug. And you actually get more fuel than you would do otherwise, so... Keep it as high throttle as possible. I don't know an awful lot about the bug, I've just heard of it. But uh, at any rate, we'll try and keep it at high throttle. I think we're fine, actually. I think we're doing well anyway. On our last fuel tanks for this part of the mission. Tilting over a bit more. I can hear my parents outside the room. I wonder if they'll disrupt the recording. Let's hope not. I'm desperately trying to turn clockwise now, but it's so slow to respond. Oh uh, yeah, and then it overcompensates when it does respond. Come on. Nearly empty on those fuel tanks. And jetson. Yes, avoid the engine. That's right. Ha. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the map screen. An apogee of 95, that's a bit high. So we want to be going straight over to try and bring that across as much and not up as much. So, after a short interruption for my parents, we shall continue the mission. <laughs> and we'll just keep burning sideways, I think. How much, how well are we doing for fuel? Ah, oh, we actually want to be on full throttle. We're doing very well, to be precise. Nearly got just one remaining tank left. Okay. 
we want this apple apps to be around 120 so just a bit more there we go 120 and 100 meters that's fine let's time accelerate up to that mark and four seconds left three seconds two seconds burn We want to be burning above the horizon because we are past the upper apps to compensate for the fact that we're actually on a downwards trajectory right now. There we are. A bit more. This is accelerating extremely fast. I like it. Oh, wait. Okay, that's 50. Oh, getting close. You can end up with a very inclined orbit. Oh, we have barely any control when we're not burning so oh, come on tilt we need to be fa we really need to be pointing above the horizon right now we really really do as I glance towards my door hoping that we don't have another interruption burn upwards burn upwards 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 come on come back around gets okay, too high upwards way too high upwards <laughs> Come on, oh, don't tilt over that way. Really? Okay, fine, screw you. 115. Great. How can it tilt so much? Let's put the RCS on. Yeah, as if that'll help. That's not. Okay. Let's time accelerate. So, we might as well... Oh, I don't know what to do, actually. We still have a fair amount of fuel left in here, so I feel like we should do something with it. Yeah, let's warp around to the Apple apps, let's increase our orbit. Just underneath Solar Escape. Luckily we're pointing prograde at this point in time, so that helps. Or at least roughly prograde. Apple apps ended up being 119 and 115. They shouldn't really shake at that. That's not particularly even. Anyway, we suddenly have loads more control when the engine comes on because it's vectoring and it shouldn't be, but never mind. I mean, I'm okay with the fact that it's vectoring, it's just that when it vectors too much with SAS on. Oh, that's it, run out. Let us let jettison and continue. Oh, we left that in orbit. So what? Don't really care right now. Um, what was I saying? I knew I was saying something. Surely. Uh, something about something. <laughs> yes, when you have SAS on and you're using those big vectoring engines, you can just build up oscillations as it tries to compensate and you end up breaking everything in half. So, not so good, really. And this is taking a long time to burn. It's the most, well it's not the most efficient engine, but it's the second most efficient engine. The most efficient being the small LV-909. And it is very, very lightweight concerning thrust and having to carry all this. So, God knows how slow it'll go if we put more tanks on here. But at least it is burning rather slowly. Right, we can probably use RCS, just for the hell of it try and reduce some weight by burning it needlessly okay let's try and sort this out actually heading 90 yes and pitch 180 180 okay execute no no where are you going no no Bad Mechjeb. How ah uh, look heading is ninety swear and pitch maybe it's zero? Maybe it's zero pitch. Ah really ridiculous. This is so annoying. I'm no good at these things, believe it or not. I'm great at chip design, or at least I'm told. Okay, let's try zero. There we go. Why was it not 180? Uh, I have no idea. Whatever. 
We want this just and the solar system escape to try and recreate things as faithfully as possible. We've only used up like one quarter of the fuel, which is quite good. RCS is fine, we have plenty. Thank god we actually got Mechjeb to work. Oh, oh wait, I think that was... No, that, I think that might have been a moon uh, rendezvous occurring. Just on the solar system escape. Oh, there we are, curve and escape. Okay, let's let's use our RCS. There we are. RCS is actually working surprisingly well. That was just RCS there. Okay, RCS off. We don't want to burn you now. There we are. So we should be coming in at around this speed. Or even faster, actually. So what we want to do to regrate this, so we are coming in from solar orbit and what would happen is that we'd actually set our you know, let's walk around and talk about it we'd set our trajectory to go through the atmosphere so it would that would slow us down into this orbit and then we'd compensate with the main moon part, whatever it's called this, this stage right here we'd compensate with that Oh, we're barely going to get any speed at all. This will be pretty easy. So, to slow us down into a smaller orbit, we actually want to point pro... We we stop rotating. Thank you. No. Get lost, smart ass. Smart ass. You really are an ass. So, we just want to bring our trajectory down into the atmosphere. Maybe around... 40. We'll go... We'll go 40... Two. <laughs> Just pluck numbers from my head. 70, 60, 50, 45. Yeah, 45. I mean, we can do laps. doesn't really matter. Okay, let's warp. And we fall down at starting startling speeds. Just down into the atmosphere. We want to be into the atmosphere. Don't want to miss it due to floating point errors. Okay, so we're going very fast, and we've just hit the atmosphere. So, if I'm right, 45 should mean we don't get trapped and fall down to Earth, Kerbin, we, but we should get sufficient drag to actually bring this down. You can see the numbers falling. We already are experiencing some drag due to the atmosphere, which is nice. It's going fairly fast. What's our altitude? We're falling pretty rapidly. We're still speeding up, so... Okay, things are going splendidly so far. That is actually falling pretty fast for my liking. Oh, we would have had a Minmus. <laughs> Minmus there, but never mind. Minmus encounter, that's the word. 25 seconds to go, roughly, until our periaps. This is falling alarmingly fast. Actually, no, it's not falling that fast, if you think about it. It's come about half the way, and we've come about half the way. Nearly, so... Maybe we'll get a moon encounter. In the end ship, we'll likely have some probes that we can send off. Oh yeah, there's a moon encounter, and there it goes. In the end... Uh, game, you know, end ship will probably have some probes, so we might be able to get a moon encounter and send some into an orbit around it. That'd be pretty nice. We are now past the periaps, and this is looking good. So we've used the atmosphere to slow down it sufficiently to A, keep us within the orbit of Kerbin, and to bring that orbit down a fair amount so that we can use the lander later. Now, we would actually be inclined after coming in from solar orbit just because nothing is perfect. And we are slightly inclined now, but nothing to really worry about. Uh, what we would do is do all this in the same way, and then we'd go back up to our apoaps, and we'd adjust the inclination there. But we're doing fine right now, so that doesn't really matter. 59 kilometers. And we have plenty of fuel left. 
I'm just worried about this. It might well snap off. It might well. What I yeah, what I really want is for the parachutes to deploy and for them to yank the command module off of all this. Because we can't simply decouple it due to all the problems with debris and how they are handled in the game at present, which I really hope they fix. Really hope they fix. Oh, we are now actually out of the atmosphere. What's our orbit? At about the moon. <laughs> At about exactly the moon, to be precise. At about exactly the moon, to be precise. Huh, wonderful. Okay, so what we want to do now is... thing is, we've only got one pilot. Uh, the best thing we could do if we had two pilots would be to uh, drop the lander now, set it on its course, and then sort this out by ourselves, but we can't do that. So we're going to have to get into a good enough orbit with this. And there's no point using fuel, so we're going to have to do another pass. What is our periaps? All the debris I have around Kerbin. Oh, come on. Tell me, damn it. Otherwise I'll delete you all. 44. Okay, we want to raise that a bit. Because 44 brought us a significant way from nearly uh, escape velocity down to here. So, we shall raise that. Is that... Yeah, that's retrograde. Okay. All the way around. This video is getting rather long. Yes. Okay, prograde, and we can raise this. We'll raise it to 55. Or 56. We'll see how that happens, how that works. Ooh, not that fast. We might miss the atmosphere completely. There we go. 56. So that's 10 kilometers into the atmosphere. Or just over 10 kilometers. And let's see how fast this falls takes a while. It does take a while to do missions like this. Of course, if we did the maths, we'd be able to get a perfect orbit on our first try, but we're not doing any maths right now, which is a relief, because I've just got back from school. Well, I say just, it's been a couple of hours now, but yeah, I've had enough maths. Although I love solar maths. It's far more interesting than uh, what have we been doing. What have we been doing, actually? <laughs> Do I pay attention enough to realise what we've been doing? Huh. Really can't remember. Huh. That is actually very... Oh, similar triangles. Yes. How interesting. Okay, we are approaching our periaps. 3, 2, 1, and we're at the periaps. How much far have we come? That was not low enough. You know what, we're actually going to burn retrograde now. <laughs> Why? Because I say so. Let's give it a helping hand. Just because this isn't an actual journey. And we can't do any compensating when we're not in the capsule. Because stupidly I decided that we should only have room for one. Which was rather a silly idea actually. Luckily we're not having to thrust an awful lot in order to bring it down quickly. We are in the atmosphere, so that helps. Uh, we'll probably bring it down to about 1 million, I'd say. This is absolutely something we should not do on the actual mission. <laughs> when we get round to doing the actual mission. It's a complete waste of fuel. But never mind. Two million eight hundred, two million seven hundred, two million six hundred. You can read, I assume. <laughs> no offence meant if you can't, by any chance. Two million one hundred, just in case. <laughs> two million. Oh, why did I stop that? I hover my thumb over X now. Well, actually, no, that's wrong. I hover my first finger over X. Just in case anything happens. We're actually out of the atmosphere right now. And you know what? 1,400,000 or thereabouts. Yeah, that's fine. 
that's fine. I don't know if I'll do a rendezvous in this video because it's getting pretty long, so yeah. Maybe in the next one. Maybe in the next one. Part 2.5, eh? Oh, we've just gone past. So, what we want to do now is... Yes, we want to detach and then increase our orbit. So, at, at this point in time on the actual mission, we'd be relatively low. Maybe 200 kilometer orbit, just off the top of my head, something like that. So, right now, we shall point retrograde, if this big hulking ship will actually let us. Come on. We shall eject the lander, burn to bring it down, to bring its trajectory to how we want it, and then will we... Oh! No, we can't. Ah, bugger. Because we only have one pilot. Trust me, the final design, we shall have two pilots. That is something we need. At least two. Possibly three. We might as well fill up that extra seat. Okay, let's just burn blindly for our... Now, bring it out of the atmosphere. Bring it out of the atmosphere. 69. Let's go for 7 80 to be safe. Okay! <laughs> I'm not going to rendezvous with this. No, I'm not. I'm just proving a point right now. And then we detach this. Okay, and then we use this to burn retrograde. Fire! I said fire! Thank you. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Didn't think about actually landing where we want to land. Oh, we prefer to land in daylight as well. Damn it. Oh well, we're too committed. That should bring us down, but to be safe we're going to land there. Okay, on this big continent here. Which I think there's a mountain range around here, so let's hope we don't hit that. Already 1.5 kilometers away from it. Okay, let's time accelerate. There it goes. So, okay, let's just recap before we go into and do the landing. Things we are actually going to do on the actual mission. We will have a this will have more pilots so we'll be able to adjust it and the trial and success ship will be left in a 200 kilometer beautifully circular orbit instead of this hyperbolic why is that oh that's our apparatus <laughs> instead of this hyperbolic orbit we have with this and we shall wow that has come down extremely fast uh that'll be in a perfect orbit and then we'll land and we'll time accelerate until it comes back around to about here and then we can launch again and rendezvous with it hopefully immediately because I hate taking too long with these things and we should probably check what we're doing okay we're fine we want to get subsonic oh geez geez oh watch the geez watch the geez Wilfrey I'm sorry but your bones are probably being disintegrated right now oh and breathe out <laughs> Over 10 G's is lethal, and I think this line is 10 G's, so, yeah, that's 15 right there, if you can't see. Alright, luckily we have still a lot of fuel left, so we can open the parachutes now. That's good. And we're landing in darkness, which is not ideal, but never mind. So, 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 so. We shall land with this, and we'll get back into orbit, and that will be the end of the video. Parachutes open at 500 meters above the ground, that is real altitude, 500 meters above the ground. So when these open, we shall know how high we are, 830 roughly. So 830 subtract 500 leaves us 330 meters. So we're, when we're at 330 meters, we shall actually be at the ground level. Simple maths, people. Simple maths. So we want to start slowing down at about 380. That gives us 50 meters. We can uh, open up the landing legs. 
380, 380, or about that much. About 400, that's fine. Okay, that was a bit fast, but never mind. Worked fine, trust me. There we go! Right. Lander works beautifully. Let's extend all the ladders. Actually, you know what? We're going to do our observation in the night. <laughs> yes, we are. Let's have the light on. It's an excuse to use the light. So, let's get out. Let us climb down. That's a very big lander we have here. And once again, as we said in part one, Mission Control, are you receiving me? Mission Control, says Wilfrey Kerman. We read you loud and clear, Wilfrey. What does it look like down there? I have made contact. I forgot to say a speech, as I know I should have. I'm sorry. Uh, but can you see me on the cameras? Yes, we can. Okay. It looks pretty much like Kerbin. A bit boring, really. There's nothing around. So let's go. Turn off the light, and we'll just go home get up here we can retract the ladder at the right point unfortunately the gravity of Kerbin is too high for us to use jetpacks that would be amusing it also be probably fatal <laughs> for our Kerbals but never mind right 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 let us go retract those landing legs we'll get back into a 200 km orbit like we've said we should have left our return vessel. Oh, why am I tilting over already? Back into a 200 km orbit and that will be hunky and dory. And we would rendezvous there but we can't because it's not actually in a 200 km orbit. Okay, so the fuel in this stage has nearly ran out. You'll notice, if you've been paying attention, there we go, we'll detach and we'll continue to thrusting. You'll notice that we're actually in a very high orbital trajectory. That means we're going a lot higher, a lot uh, more than we would do at any normal time. That's because this landing engine is so feeble that we need to get high enough for it to actually do any useful work. And that's what we're doing right now. So we can tilt over more with this. See, it's only just starting actually accelerating us. Uh, it is actually very feeble. Stay around here. Take a look at our situation. 90, okay. So that we're going to want to get out to 200, and then we'll circularize, and then we'll call it a day. Because I've been playing Kerbal Space Program for a long time. A long time indeed. Just wanted to recap a few problems uh, with the previous video. Somebody rightly commenta uh, commented, <laughs> they didn't commentate, they commented that, they commented pointing out that air breathing engines aren't actually reliable for planetary use because we don't know what the atmosphere content of the other planets will be. Unless we do. <laughs> I don't personally at any rate, and this guy didn't, I assume. So, yes this lander beats that in that instance it does not rely on the use of atmospheric engines or, although if it did it could actually be extremely efficient so that's something to research to find out whether we can actually use atmospheric engines uh, another problem this overcomes is the fact that we could use boosters if we wanted to because boosters are great when they're burnt out they're actually extremely lightweight they weigh something like 0 0.38 kilograms, which is pretty unrealistic, uh, but they do that anyway because they don't care about the rules. And they have plenty of thrust, so we could use that if we so desired. Still, I doubt that there will be any planets harder to uh, get off of than Kerbin is, because that's the way it goes, really. 
Kerbin will have a far denser atmosphere than the other ones, I should imagine. Nearly actually out of fuel. That's a bit foreboding. It's actually extremely foreboding. Why are we that low? In all the tests I've done, we've had plenty of fuel. That is slightly almost worrying. No matter, I think we have enough fuel to get into a 120km orbit. We'll aim for that just to be safe. Oh. We don't even have that. Okay. Ah. That is a problem. That is actually a problem. We shall look into that in the next episode. I've decided there will be a part three. At some point. But for now, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My first proper live commentary in the Kerbal Space Program, I think. And I hope you enjoyed it. So, if you did enjoy and you liked the video, please do like the video. That is, after all, the reason the button is there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Let's have a look at this before we go. 8 Gs. Ooh. Ow. Crushing. <laughs> 10 days mission time. Wow. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.